Morning crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now you might have seen very recently another video went on the channel covering the contactor set and some more testing on three more reportedly failed contactors for the worn sort of small size winches, you know, 3,000 pound, 4,000 pound kind of winch. Um, and well, without, without giving a spoiler alert, you know, we did some testing and stuff on them, and well, two out of the three, you'll find out. Watch the video. Anyway, in line with continuing with winch stuff, because there are lots and lots of winches around the world now, with the with the massive increase in sales and ATVs of, uh, and ROVs, you know, side-by-sides, you know, we all want winches on the front. I remember the day when... There was really only winches fitted to sort of the front of Land Rovers and all this and patrols and stuff when we used to go off-roading in the forest. But now they're all over the place. Even electric winches on trailers to help load up dead vehicles and stuff. So when a viewer sent this in and said, hey Andy, can you take a look at my worn uh, Vantage 3000, which is what this is, uh, it's not working properly. I don't know what it is. We've already changed the contactor. It's made no difference. Can you strip it down and let me know? I can do that. Absolutely. And I think it's actually quite useful information for all those other winch owners out there because lots of us do fix our own winches. There's no reason why you can't. Um, obviously, try and get hold of a service manual or at least an owner's manual that will give you an exploded parts diagram. I've got that for this winch, and I'll put it. I'll put a link to a Google Drive folder where you can download it. Um, but it took me about five minutes on Google to find it. It's not hard. At least it gave me the exploded diagram and and you know sort of the the order of where the parts should be and how the thing sort of goes together. But it's not difficult. So, before we pull it apart, the first thing to do is to verify the customer complaint. It doesn't work, was the complaint. A um, little bit more information around that. He was using the winch. It only had it a short time. It's not very old, this winch. And um, wasn't a particularly long pull. He said this is what's been reported, that he hadn't used it for very long, maybe five or ten minutes of use. And it seemed to get quite hot. Uh, it seemed to go quite slow, and then it stopped working. Hmm. I've given it the sniff test. It doesn't smell good, but we need to have a little look inside and work out what the problem is. Is it a mechanical failure in the gearbox? Is it a bearing that's seized up or, or, or you know, poor manufacture? Is it the motor that's burnt out? All of these things can be fixed, and you, being a worn winch, you can easily get parts for them. They do lots of various repair kits, and again, we'll look on the laptop uh, at all of that information in this video, so you know where to look and where to get the bits and pieces. If you don't want to fix the winch yourself, you can always take it down to your local winch uh, supplier. They usually have a repair shop, but just brace yourself, because they can charge the earth. The problem is we live in a disposable world, and a winch like this, it doesn't take long when you start to include labour to repair it for it to become redundant and get thrown in the scrap, and you have to just go and buy a new one. Obviously, the purchase price of the winch has a bearing on that. Uh, I've got a, a £16,000 worn electric winch on the front of my Nissan Patrol, and it was very, very expensive, and I wouldn't dream of throwing that away. I would always fix it if it failed. And, fair dues to warn, it's been brilliant. I had a hydraulic winch on the front of my Unimog 2, and again, £16,000, never a problem. Always did what I needed it to do, which was to recover other vehicles. Of course, the Unimog itself never got stuck. It was a brilliant piece of kit. Wish I still had it now. But anyway, Andy rambles on. Uh, let's get on with the credits and then we'll dig into this winch. Here we go. <laughs> Used. Okay, simple test. We've got a charged up battery and a 
well, actually a pair of pretty crappy jump leads. I've ordered a new set through Forge. Jared, where's my jump leads? <laughs> These are terrible. <laughs> it's real Chinese stuff. Look, you can even bend. Look at that. You can even bend the um, the actual crocodile clips with your fingers. I'm forever straightening them up. Right, let's chuck that one on there. Make sure they're not touching. Let's chuck that one on there. Uh, I wonder if this thing's going to work or not. I haven't pre-tested it. I don't know what's going to happen. Polarity is irrelevant because the uh, the contactor block, because it's only a two-pole motor, there's only two contacts, it just switches polarity to reverse the winch or you know back to normal for normal spooling. So we'll just pull that there. Okay, we've got the two contacts either side of the motor. I'm just going to energize those. And we might get some sparks, it might start, hopefully it'll start to turn, that's the whole idea, but we'll wait and see. Well, there you go, look, we've got, we've got sparks, that's all we've got. If we leave it on, what's it going to do? Well, there's no smoke coming out, is there? But we do have a circuit. Okay, right, let's get rid of that, make it safe. Good job. We won't be needing that anymore at all. Next job is let's dig our way in. I think the first thing to do is to pull off the motor itself. So we'll slide this sheath off and we'll inspect the armature, have a look at the brushes, see what's been going on. Now the motor casing is held on with these four cap head bolts basically. So we'll whiz those out. don't know whether the customer's been in this or not, to be honest. I, I don't know the history of the motor or the, the winch itself, in all honesty. Oh, I see it's got some paint marks on it. <laughs> Very clever. Because it is important you line the motor up, the casing. Jeez, you get a screwdriver. Seems a little bit tight. Let's give it a go. There'll be some kind of seal in there to keep the moisture out anyway. Oh, nearly. So close. There we go. Right. <laughs> Pits of O-ring. Let's take a close up. Right, you've got the torch on as well. How's that for professionalism? Oh, it doesn't look good. <laughs> We've got a rogue winding. Uh, the smell is quite acrid. It's quite clear that this motor is burnt out. Again, here, look. Got the one there. Not good at all. Basically, the armature is junk. And, well, I think maybe the customer's been a little bit conservative on the truth. Um, he's probably been using this uh, winch to either pulse too heavy a load or been using it for too long. But in either case, way too much current has been flowing through this motor. It's got way too hot. And, of course, it's completely... Um, you know, gone into meltdown mode. Yeah, there, look. You can see all the, the insulation on the copper has just burnt away. It's just, you know, black, basically. So this winch will need a new armature for, sh for sure. Probably, wait, I think you just, build, you just buy a complete motor, but we'll have a look on the parts list. Um, I want to have a look and see what kind of condition the brushes are, are in as well. Um, but like I say, the, the motor... The winch itself isn't supposed to be very old. It didn't last very long. I think it's more down, looking at this, it's probably more down to user education and reading the owner's manual as to what the winch can actually do and how long it can do it for. Um, because I think this is, you know, the guy presses the button and expects it to get him out of trouble. And that's not always the case with the winch. You've got to plan your attack knowing the limitations. 
Okay, so what's it, just put that to one side for a second, what's it like in here? Well, you've got the field magnets, these are fixed magnets. Now there's no uh, electrical current to create the, the actual magnetic field, they're just a standard kind of magnet. And these are bonded to the side of the uh, the motor body, the casing. And again, there's a lot of stuff in here, look, look at all this. This is probably just melted, um, you know, the actual uh, insulation, the, the varnish that they put actually, you know, on the wire, on the windings, looks to me like it's uh, it's just melted and got flung off around the inside. It's pretty bad down there, isn't it? Let's see if I can get it to focus for you. There you go, look. Pretty bad. And it really stinks. It really, really does. Where's also focus? There we are. Yeah, so not so good. But, they, you know, if it got really, really hot, I've seen it where the magnets, the glue hold of the magnet to the actual casing, fails and the magnet then becomes loose it dislodges and then you get what's called polling uh, on the actual armature where the magnet rubs against the actual armature casing here look and you get rub marks and all and it really it really turns to shit to be honest it's really bad um one thing i have noticed is this motor is quite hard to turn it's very stiff to turn and i don't know why it, sh it absolutely should not be so there may be another issue, and it, it actually might not be down to the customer. If that's come out of the factory like that, then, um, you know, of course, it's an additional load. And don't forget, yes, I'm turning this slowly, but don't forget, we have a gearbox uh, here at the other end of the winch, a planetary gear set, well, two planetary gear sets, I believe, inside there, which massively gear down this winch. So this motor doesn't produce a lot of torque, but it does spin pretty quick. And if there's that kind of resistance on it spinning, that in itself could prevent the motor from getting going initially. Or it certainly cause some drag and contribute to why maybe why, why it's burnt out. So we need to dig deeper. We're not there yet. Right, so the next job, I think, is to split the winch. Let's get the gearbox off. Let's get the drum out of the way. That's sort of superfluous at the moment. And then we can start to investigate a bit further. I want to dig deeper into the motor side first. So, let's see if we can get this cracked off. Basically, there's, oh, hang on, I think there's a little screw down the bottom. There is. We'll do that first. We've got a little screw down there. We'll get that out. Don't want to stress those threads out, do we? Okay. Now, let's just crack these off. One. There's only two, two of these rails. They should really be four, in all honesty. But you know, trying to cut costs and all that. Right. So that should now come off there. Oh, there we go. That was easy, wasn't it? Okay. Let's get the drum out of the way. I'll pop that over there for now. Got a little clutchy thing there. Look. We'll have a look at that. Okay, let's just finish off getting these rods out of the way. Because they'll only get in the way, won't they, later on? One, and Mr. Bolt. And two. There we go. Look. Great job. Okay, we'll stick the gearbox to one side for now. Let's take a closer look at this motor. Because I'm not really sure, you know what's going on as regards why it was binding up. Are the, are the brushes causing the problem or is it the bearing? Let's find out. Right, said Fred. Okay, so we've got, just before we start pulling it all apart, we've got this little clutchy thing here, look, and it's got a, it's got a ramp on there. So I reckon that's something to do with the free wheel. So when the motor starts to turn, remember the motor can turn both ways, don't forget. Hmm, okay. Yes, it's basically applying, it's moving that rod, because that's got a, that's where's my pointy stick, I'll, I'll use that, that'll do. Down there, if you can see, there's a little shoulder. So we've got that uh, drive shaft that runs through the middle of the drum, which provides power from the motor through this, we'll call it a clutch, through this clutch, onto this uh, hexagon type shaft that goes into the gearbox. And oh, actually, look, the gearbox is working. It's pretty cool, isn't it? We're going to dig into that. Maybe in this video, maybe in the next one. I might do a whole separate video on the planetary gear set. I 
I think that'd be a good idea. Let's focus on the motor for now. So I need to remove that. Oh, we've got a little bushy kind of collar thing. We'll get rid of that. Don't need that. We've got a rubber seal to keep all the bits of forest and stuff out of the winch. So I need to, by the looks of it, pull that off. That's quite tight on the shaft. We can already see the bearing. And it, it really is quite hard to turn. And it should not be. It should spin. It really should spin. So we need to work out what's causing that drag. And is it a manufacturing fault, which has then caused the failure of the winch? Or is it the abuse of the winch that's created a lot of heat that then has caused that, to, that drag to occur? We don't know. We're going to find out there. Right, first job, pull off that somehow. Is my screwdriver going to do it? Let's give it a screwdriver go first. If not, I might have to find a little puller somewhere. Let's give it a go. I might stick it in the vise. Oh, there we are, look. Bloody good. Almost there. <laughs> so close. Now it's going to fire across the workshop, I think. So ta -da! Right, so that's one way of getting that off. I don't know whether it should be tight on the shaft or not, but that one was. And you can see here, look, how it works. So the motor drive is at this side, and that's the input to the gearbox. So as the motor drives um, clockwise, I suppose you'd call it, you can see that the, the overall length of this unit increases as it climbs up that ramp. See there, look, as the motor turns, the whole thing gets longer. So what that in effect is doing is when the motor spins in that direction, it's applying additional uh, force on that drive shaft that goes into the gearbox. So, maybe that's just to engage it. I don't know yet. We need to have a look at a diagram, but there's definitely this shaft definitely gets force applied to it on the end when that's plumbed on there. You see, look. So it'll be interesting to find out what that is, what, what that does. It's obviously something to do maybe with the um, with the free spool system. I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay. Gearbox aside, well, let's do the motor. Let's focus on the motor. So the next job is we need to push the armature through this casing and separate it from the brushes so we can take a look at the brushes. Hmm, okay. I think a little, a little pull is required for that. Let's get set up in the vise. Right, this is decidedly dodgy because there's quite a radius on the casting and the old puller can't really get a lot of purchase. If this doesn't work, we'll stick it in the press. Okay, well, here goes. Very gingerly. Just trying to keep the legs in place. It could all end in disaster. Oh, we should be wearing eye protection, actually. Had a few eye accidents recently, so eye protection is always a good idea. You never quite know what's going to happen. Oh, we've got movement. I actually wasn't expecting that to work. Good job, little puller. Wow, that armature is really tight in the bearing. Right, that's just the brushes dropping off the commutator. Ah, good job. Genuinely very impressed by that. Who makes that one? The famous Toledo puller. Look at that. It's famous now. Good job. Right. Okay. I think some more close up is required. So, here we go. The brush pack. Well, we can see immediately there's been a lot of heat build up between these two brushes here. Um, that brush, is it worn out or is it seized? Because it should be further out than that. There we go, look, it was seized. Okay, so probably down to something melting and the actual fact there's something stuck under there. The hell's that? 
you can see it's actually deformed slightly around here so that is likely why that brush was stuck in um, this one is also a little bit sticky there we go look it's coming out now so we had a couple of stuck brushes these ones appear to be fine uh, and there's no significant wear on the brushes which would indicate that you know, it, would, it, would, it would tally with the fact that the winch isn't very old it hasn't done much very very much work so we need to remove said brush pack and by the looks of it we've got some kind of a bolt there and another one here so we're going to have to oh, can we get those brush there's a chicken and egg situation for you so the brush won't come out with the brush pack in situ because of this lip and I can't really get to the bolt because the brush wire is in the way. I'll have to really push that out of the way to do it. Okay, we can do that. So where's my little driver? I think it's an M, a 4 mil Allen key. Let's give it a go. There we go. That's one. Good job. Wow. It's nice to see they're using the same bolts for everything. Okay. Now we've also got the, the brushes are connected to the input terminals, which are these two here. So we're going to need to slacken those off as well. In which case, I'm going to need a 10 mil spanner or something, aren't I? Let me go and get what I need. Now these could be, they look a bit rusty, so we'll stick a bit of this, um, the old black magic, the S411 from Forge. Thanks, Jared. We'll stick a little bit of that on there. That should make our life a lot easier. Now I don't have to undo these completely, I don't think. We should just be able to slide out the connector. That's the plan. I'm looking forward to getting this thing fixed, actually. I'm not going to throw it in the bin, unless the parts are stupidly expensive. Right, so that should, in theory, just slide off there. They usually do. It doesn't want to, does it? Maybe it's stuck. Let me see on this side more room this side to play aren't we it does look a bit melted actually I'm really impressed with that just give that a little bit of a tappy tap is that going to help hang on let's keep going let me get a socket hang on Let's give this a go. Ah. Oh, look at that. It's actually got a threaded block on there. Never seen that before. Wow. See? Tappy taps were not needed. Good job, Warren. And of course, you've got the rubber seals, everything to keep all the forest out again, which is good. But now we can remove the block. So. What I want, to well, actually, it actually makes no difference because it's a reverse polarity motor, so it doesn't matter which way around those go, I wouldn't say. Okay, let's just stick that back in there for now, just so we don't forget where they go. Pretty obvious, but you know. Anything to help Andy? And we'll stick those back in there. In fact, no, we've got a bearing today, haven't we? So we'll pull those out, put them somewhere on the bench, pull those out. They haven't been getting too hot by the looks of it. Okay, let's pop that to one side for now. A bit more of a look on the brush pack. So again, yeah, definitely you can see some heat around there. They are sticking. Yeah, it's not so clever, is it, really? That's how they should be. These two are fine. Those two are definitely not fine. Just doing a little walk around. You see all the heat, the discoloration in that plastic. And I saw exactly the same thing in the Makita um angle grinder that we stripped down a couple of years ago hmm interesting so obviously when you buy new brushes you get all four and they're crimped they're already pre-crimped to this little block so you can't just replace one brush you've got to replace all of them which is i suppose fair enough they won't be that expensive i shouldn't think uh, oh probably you'll end up just they'll just supply you a complete brush pack which will be this bit and you'll just bolt this in so obviously that's one thing we're going to need. Right, that needs to be replaced. Stick it over there in the re to replace pile. 
Now, just looking a bit more detail on the actual armature, you can really get a good idea now of just how badly burnt the whole thing is. There's lots and lots of debris we've got. I would say there's probably going to be more. Oh, there's, there's a burnt one. Look, that one's burnt. So we'll bend that out of the way so you can see it. It is burnt. It's not making a fool of me, is it? Yeah, there's definitely... Oh, there he is. That one there. I think one of them is. Because we've got a tail. Unless it's been a bad... Just a leftover. What else have we got? Any more? That one's got pretty damn hot, hasn't it? It's all black. There's something else going on down here. That's not ideal. Okay, and then this end, well, obviously you can see now that winding joined together. And it's just burnt out. It looks like it's actually got caught on something as well, doesn't it? It looks mutilated. Whereas all the rest are just burnt. Very burnt. Hmm. I wonder if there's any any shorts of ground. Let's get the meter out and see if there's because it should be insulated. There should be none of these windings should short down onto the shaft of the actual armature. And that's a real simple check we can do. So I'll grab the meter and we'll do that. Now, if you've got a multimeter, this is a really simple test that you can do at home as well. So we'll just test the meter. It should go beep. It does go beep. Excellent. So all we need to do now, basically, is put that onto one of these, one of the commutator points, and go down to ground, and then just keep taking it around. That is incredible. I was expecting just to see, because the insulation is so badly damaged, I was expecting to see it shorted to ground. But it's not, is it? Wow. You see, that's, that connects to there, you see, which it should do. So we can test it from here. But yeah, there's nothing. Bizarre. Okay, now, depending on how this thing's wired up, I think, judging by this, the current flow is... What have we got? So whilst I've done motors, dum 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 dum, so that one goes right round to there, yes, that goes to there and to here opposite. So right, yes, yeah, so current flow is basically, um, there's no point in saying positive or negative because this motor can have reverse polarity. Uh, that's how it rewinds, it you know, spools out and spools in. Um, but the current flow will be flowing from this brush through some windings, whichever one, whichever commutator points it's in contact with, and then back out through this other brush. And that's why this pair is overheated, because that's the one that's had the short in it. Something has shorted out and caused excessive current flow which then has caused additional heat, excessive heat, and it's burnt everything. That's my take on it. Okay, so there's not really much more we can do with the armature. We need a new one of those. So we'll stick that in the need new pile. Jeez, it's going to be expensive. Okay, let's turn that one off. Save the battery. Bench is already filling up. Okay. Lastly, well, there's one more thing to do here, because we haven't got a lot of stuff left now. We've got a bearing. And this bearing, something was causing it to be real tight, wasn't it, when we were turning it? So can I turn the bearing? Is the bearing free? The bearing is not free. The bearing is very, very tight. Let me get a pick and we'll whiz that seal out. Why would the bearing be so tight? What's going on? Doesn't want to move, does it? It's got grease in it. That's bizarre. I mean, sure, the grease is a little bit burnt. It's not ideal. It's not all greasy colour like it is over here. Some of it has got hot. But that's no real reason why it should, it should seize up like that. Okay, let's get it pressed out, because it's got to come out anyway and be replaced. Let's get it pressed out and give it a wash out. 
and see if we can see any kind of mechanical failure on that bearing. That might well be, or have been, the primary fail of this winch. Possibly. If that bearing had been tight from day one when it was installed, that would have put additional load on the motor, and it could have actually caused the motor not to even turn at all, the armature, and it could have just burnt it out. Most bizarre. Okay. How the hell are we going to get that out of there? We could try, because the bearing is knackered, we could try just putting a socket in there and giving it a little tappy tap. Or we could stick it in the press. Yes, I think this casting is strong enough to cope with the press. <laughs> Otherwise we'll be buying another bit. I could always support it from underneath with a big socket. We'll do that. Okay, to the press. Ugly ugly. Fingers crossed this is going to work. We don't break the casting. We've got a big socket underneath. Thanks, uh, Brandon. Here we go. Now, I know we're pushing on the inner race of the bearing, but it's the only way of getting them out. And I suppose they assume with the fact that if you're taking the bearing out, it's going to go in the bin because it's shot. Perfect. That was um, very controlled, wasn't it? Okay, let's get rid of the casing and the bearing. There we go. Look. Right, one casing, one socket, and in there is the prize. Right, back to the bench. Woohoo! Okay, we have the bearing out, so a bit of brake cleaner. And where's my rag? see if we can see anything in here it just seems really weird why the bearing will be so tight on such a new winch let's get that other seal out yeah, I mean, it doesn't look that bad it just doesn't look that bad it doesn't mind your eyes it got burnt. I mean, it, to create that kind of heat will be phenomenal to damage a bearing. It's only a winch. That really is sea solid. I can't even move it. Oh, there we are. Jeez. I'm intrigued as to why that's so tight. Let me smash the cage up and then we can push all the bearings to one side and actually split the bearing open. I really want to see if there's any... I mean, where's the brushes gone? No, there's not. There's no plastic gone missing. None of this, this casing has gone missing and gone in the bearing because it already had the seals in it. So we may well have found the problem. Hmm. Do I smash the cage or do I slip this the bearing? I'm going to slit this skip. I am. Autopsy time. Here we go. Has the battery got enough juice in it to do the next one? That'll do, Gromit. That'll give us a good idea, won't it? Ow, ow, hot, 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 hot. Okay. I was going to cut the whole thing in half, but I think we can get around it. So if we just do that, okay, 
So we need to have a look at the races. So where's my brake cleaning gun? What have we got? Forge! Ah, 510. Good gear. Right, mind your eyes. Trying to avoid the sharp bits. It's got a lot of goo in it. It's got a lot of goo. I wonder if... I wonder if all the smoke, when this was going up, when it uh, when it burnt off this varnish, you know, just in the same way that the varnish went basically all over the motor body, because it shouldn't look like that. It's gone everywhere. I wonder if somehow it's managed to force its way through the bearing, you know, through the seal, into the bearing and contaminate the bearing with varnish, and that's why it's all it's all jammed up. Because the only really manufacturing fault will be if it was if there was pitting in there and it doesn't look like there is any pitting. Oh, there'll be another video of putting this winch back together one day, won't there? I can see it happening. I do like to find out why things have failed. You see, that's not grease. This this dark brown stuff is not grease. This is I reckon that's that residue from the varnish. That's what I reckon that is. So I don't think it's a manufacturing fault on the bearing. I think it's actually, yeah, there, look, you can see it. You can see it quite clearly. It's just coming off when you scratch it. So, yes. Customer-induced failure, without a doubt. Wow, that motor must have got pretty damned hot to do that. Heat up the air, and then the only way that the air could escape, because it had an O-ring seal, around the end of the casing, and the casing is completely sealed, um, is, I suppose the only way is out is through these, and again there's a pretty hefty o-ring there, whereas these seals, they're really only like a dust seal, they're not fully airtight as such, so this will be the point of least resistance, and the expanding air inside the motor, the heating up air, would have passed through this bearing, and carried with it some of that varnish, and that varnish has then settled on the races and caused the bearing to seize up, which you know, in turn would have added more resistance to the motor trying to turn, and the demise has begun, hasn't it? That's it, game over. I do like these autopsy videos, they're brilliant. Everyone tells a different story, and you never know what to expect until you start pulling the whole thing apart. Okay, I did promise you uh, a quick look on the laptop at the parts diagram. Obviously, I'll put you a link in the description as well. With regards to the gearbox, I think this is a long enough video as it is. We know that the gearbox sort of works, and that's it doesn't appear to be a contributing factor to the failure of this winch. Um, I do want to strip it down. I do want to take a look at it, clean it all up, regrease it, do whatever, service it. Um, so we'll do a video, probably later on today, doing that. Uh, and then I can get all the parts ordered. So let's take a look on the laptop and, well, not order some parts, but at least make a parts list. Here we go. Now you may not have a Vantage 3000 worn winch like the one we've worked on, but you might need some parts for yours. So I'm on the, what are the international.worn.com forward slash replacement dash parts dash four dash power sports page. Sorry, a bit of a mouthful. Um, uh, so you can scroll down, they're very helpful. You can scroll down and we need to find our winch. So these are all different PDFs that you can download. Uh, here we go, look, Vantage replacement parts, Vantage 2000, Vantage 2000, they're almost the same. Um, Vantage 3000, we've got two options here, we've got, it says part number 89030 or part number 91030, I don't know which one ours is. And there's also a Vantage 3000S, by the looks of it, so let's take a look at the first one, see if that looks like ours. Okay, we'll open that. Oh, there we go, look. Does that look like our winch? This 
actually is like an owner's manual as opposed to a proper parts ordering thing in my jig. But let me just, I know what I can do. Bear with me, I can be smart. I can snip that. Or can I just rotate the page? There we go. And again, excellent. Okay, so we only can zoom in. There we are, look, that's what we wanted to do. So, what do we need? Well, uh, oh my word, one. Are they not giving us any individual parts for the motor? One. One. Oh man, you just buy. There, look, 895691 is the part number for the complete motor. You can't buy separate bits so I can't just buy an armature and brushes I've got to buy the complete motor which looks like it also comes with because I can't see a bearing it comes with the bearing and the end plate of the whole winch all one piece wow okay so I need a one and that's going to basically fix everything but we also need if you look here look we've got Ah, there's a six, number four is a spring, which will return it back to its original position when there's no drive for this clutch part. But there's also a spring number six. So we need a four and a six. Now the way Warren do it, so let me just flick that back round again. There we go. A four and a six. You've got to look at a parts kit that's got the numbers in you want. So I'm going to need an 89570, which has got a 4 and a 6 in it. And I'm going to need a number 1, which is 89569, which is the motor. But before I order anything, I need to make damn sure that that is my winch. And by the looks of it, the this end looks different. It's stepped, whereas the what this one is dead straight. So I'm going to have to do some more research, but anyway, I've given you the idea of where you can go to find out where to get parts and how to order them and how to work out what winch service kit part number or part numbers you need. Pretty cool, eh? Good job, Warren. Well done. Interesting. I'm a little bit surprised that you can't buy parts for the motor. You can't buy just an armature. You can't buy just a brush kit wow when your brushes wear out you've got to buy a whole new winch motor that's not clever warm we should be able to buy that on its own really should no wonder things are getting expensive to fix and no wonder we live in a disposable world where you just throw the whole thing away and go and buy a new one what a shame anyway um I've got to do some more research to try and match up exactly the winch that we've got here so I've got the part numbers of exactly what I need to fix it. I'll get those ordered. There's a Warren distributor up in Auckland so I'll, I'll put the order through them. And um, there will be another video on reassembling this winch with the new parts. It'd be great to have a little winch. I mean the guy doesn't want it back so it's, it's mine now. <laughs> um, now the next video will be stripping down this planetary gear set because obviously I want to service it, clean it all up, inspect it, make sure there's nothing broken inside here. And then when the parts arrive, I'll be able to assemble the whole thing. And I don't know, I might put it on the trailer, use it as a trailer winch for winching up dead vehicles onto the trailer. All I need to do is carry a battery around, you know, and I could do it. <laughs> you could do it. You know, where you just put the jump lead straight on the motor, or I could wire it up properly. Um, you know, with the proper contact to block and a little um, gun. You know, I can soon make a changeover switch for that. Wouldn't be hard. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long. You didn't find it too boring. But I do like the old autopsy videos, and I've been waiting to do a winch autopsy for a very long time. Uh, ever since I did the very first winch video years ago. Now, if you did find the the, uh, the video helpful, why not subscribe to the channel, click on the subscribe button, ring the bell, our friends at YouTube will send you a notification as and when I upload any new videos. And then that way, you're not going to miss out on future videos. Um, there's usually a video at least every week. There's also, uh, that's an edited video. 
There's also a live stream uh, every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. New Zealand time. Feel free to join on that, ask your questions. Uh, it's all obviously live. I'll do what I can to help. There's quite a few people from around the world that join in. It's only a small group at the moment, at least. Um, so you, you will get your say and your question, you know, will be answered. It doesn't, it's not like with the big live streams where there's thousands of people watching and the questions whiz down the side. You know, I do get a chance normally to read all the questions out and, you know, try and give some kind of input. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through those portals or if you want to flick me an email, that's down in the description, andymechanic at live.co.uk. I'm not based in the UK. I'm in New Zealand, just for clarification. Now, uh, if you want to support the channel, and support is much appreciated, it really is, and I couldn't do what I do without your support, you can do that through Patreon or through PayPal. There's a link to both of those on the homepage uh, of the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, where you are now. Okay, crew, well, until next time, cheers, over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Thank <laughs> you.